Welcome to Magic is Real, the podcast where we focus on spiritual journeys, near-death experiences, and all things metaphysical and spiritual. If this podcast resonates with you, it would mean the world if you can like, subscribe, and share with like-minded friends. Thank you so much for being here with an open heart and mind. I wish you peace, light, and love always. everybody. Welcome to Magic is Real. I'm Shannon Torrance. And today I have with me my friend Pearl, who is a psychic medium. And I have Pearl on today because not only is she a medium, she also has a podcast called Spirit Guided. Check that out for sure. Um, but I was really drawn to invite Pearl today because you guys know how much I love to talk about mediumship with other mediums. But she had posted something on Instagram that uh, just drew my attention. And it was, I love to hear how people discover their abilities. And I loved, I love to know um, everyone's journey with, as a medium. But what she had said was she mentioned that it was her mother's passing and her mother's connection with her that actually led her into this work. So I wanted to invite her on to share that story and, and other insights that she has. First, I'm just going to say thank you for being here, Pearl. I'm really happy to have you. And I appreciate you showing up with your energy and your time. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored to be here and really excited. So Me too. Well, first, I'd like to know about you. I, I'd like to know um, what your life was like before, before, either did you always know you were a medium? Um, what was your spiritual background or not spiritual background? And what were your beliefs and anything that pertains to your spiritual journey? I'd love to learn about you. Thanks. Um, fun. And I hadn't really thought about it before I came on. So, um, or how to say it, but I don't know that I ever thought I was a medium growing up. I mean, I loved watching, um, Sylvia Brown on the Montel Williams show Me too. <laughs> at a really young age. I mean, that was like my jam. I actually got to see her in person, um, before she passed away. Jam. My dad took me, it was an event, but it was still so cool. So I always had a natural tendency towards psychics and mediums. Um, but I guess I thought everybody did. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. um, I definitely had now that I know, and, um, that I can do this work looking back on my life, definitely. There was multiple times where I, I can say for sure that was spirit communication. Um, one of the things that sticks out to me is my biological dad passed away when I was eight weeks old. Um, it was a tragic, uh, he, his motorcycle ran out of gas and he uh, was walking down highway and a semi struck him and killed him. And I was just eight weeks old. He was 23, very young. And um, so when I was a little girl, I had a dad who I thought was my biological dad. And I remember specifically one time very clearly that um, I think kids were making fun of me that day and I was feeling sorry for myself and alone and missing my dad who raised me. And um, I remember Chris is his name and he came to me and he was, you know, Texas man saying, you know, hey, darling, it's okay. And I'm here and I love you and all these really comforting things. And I was like, what's going on? Who is this guy that feels like a father? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like it didn't make sense to me because I didn't know about him. Um, and it scared me, to be honest, because I didn't know what was happening. Like I, yeah. you know, um, and I must have been like seven or eight, maybe eight, nine, um, something like that. And so I know I had that communication. And then I don't know about you, but I think when we're, um, Pro, uh, not programmed, uh, designed to do this work. Um, so I always, like when I was younger and maybe teenage years, I would see like colors around people, specifically darkness. So I knew if somebody kind of had like, it almost looked like a little dark storm cloud, like I would know, oh, I don't really want to go to that party or I don't really want to hang out with them or I, you know, but I thought that was normal too. Like I thought everybody picked up on sensing things in different ways. So also very much um, experienced that and then realized later, like not everybody did, you know, like I thought, so I don't know if you have those same kind of like experiences yeah. or like, oh, um, so yeah, lots of things like that. But um, it was really when I was 30 and my mom passed away, um, and so I kind of touched on the fact that she had raised me with the impression that somebody else was my dad. Um, so she kept a secret 
and didn't yeah. tell me um, when she was alive, but I have to credit her. She did tell me, but it was in spirit. So I was just sitting at the computer in my house and this was probably just three days after she died. And she came up behind me and was like, Pearl, I gotta tell you something. I gotta show you something. Let's go to the garage. And so like, first of all, I mean, it was like she was there. So I was like trusting it and it's your mom, right? So you yeah. trust the communication and you trust the feeling. But I was also like, am I losing it? Like I had just had my daughter, my third child. She was eight weeks old. So I was even, you know, in that postpartum kind of energy. And I was like, I don't know, like, this is weird, but I'm going to do it. And I went out to the garage and she's with me and she's like, look in my lockbox. And I couldn't get it open. And she's like, lift it over your head and smash it on the ground. Like it was so dramatic, but I was like, okay. And then it opened up just pop. And inside were pictures of my biological dad, um, his uh, newspaper clipping from when he died, like all this stuff. Um, but I still didn't know yet that he was my biological dad. I just was like, what is this? And she left a checkbook because back in the day, like early eighties, you know, you write checks for everything. And it was like, pizza money, beer money. And it was, I could see my dad who raised me and my biological dad overlapping. So it's almost like she like saved this proof that like she was maybe hanging out with both men at the same time. So I really don't know that she for sure knew who my dad was, but since Chris died, she kind of had to just, I think she met well and yeah. just, um, but, uh, so I show my husband, so I have these pictures and stuff and I show my husband, I'm like, I don't know. And he's like, oh my gosh, this is basically you as a man, <laughs> like this is yeah. for your dad. Um, so then I did a DNA test with my dad who raised me and we weren't related. So that was pretty shocking and, um, having to go through all of that. But really, I'm just so grateful that my mom came through so strong, came to me so clearly and really changed the trajectory of my life because it was her talking to me and I trusted it. And, um, from then I kept having babies. I have five children. And so I didn't really develop until I was done with the little baby raising time. Um, and then before the pandemic, um, well, like a few years before the pandemic, um, a friend got sick and couldn't make it to a Cindy Kaza show. Cindy Kaza and Anthony Morocco were coming to Boulder and doing a show together. Um, so last minute I got this ticket to go and, um, you and know, both are psychic mediums, just in case anyone doesn't know who they are. Yes. Celebrities. And teachers and yeah. Um, and I'm sitting next to this woman who it's like the anniversary of her daughter's death. And like, she really wants to connect. And like, I'm thinking, oh, no way I'm going to get any spirit communication. But the night had gone on and it was almost over. And I went to the restroom and I was like, mom, like, I know we talk, I know we have a relationship, but it would be so cool if you came through on stage. And I go back to my seat and not two minutes later, Cindy turns to me and she's like, you, <laughs> like so strong and brings through my mom to a tea, painted her alive so beautifully, shared such meaningful message with me and then said, by the way, you're a medium and this is the beginning of your mediumship journey. And so I was like stunned a bit, you know, and also felt the magic of the night, you know, and trusted it and um, sort of, I think took two years to digest that <laughs> before I, I went and studied under Cindy and kind of grew from there. And um, here we are today. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. I have one thing to say and one question for you. Uh, I love I love that you brought up trust. Everybody that watches knows I have a tattoo, one tattoo, and it just says trust. It's not even pretty. It just is a word. It just says trust. <laughs> and it's for that reason, because when you said that you just trusted that it was your mother's voice. You trusted it was, you You knew, you're like, all right, well, I'm on this journey. Let's walk in and go get that box out. Yeah. Most, I think most of us are, we all have intu intuition. Some are more sensitive than others. The missing link is trust. Mm -hmm. Like that's it. It's just trusting that the voices in your head, which we all have, we all have them. We just either dismiss them, aren't paying attention, think their own thoughts and a lot of them are our own thoughts um the missing link like in mediumship like if I were to right like it's just trust trust that what you're saying is true because it's like when you're reading someone it feels like you're making it up it feels like you're just sort of telling a made-up story 
But it's when they say, yeah, that that that's actually true. You're like, I guess I didn't make that up. Right. Um, so I think that's a really important thing. Not even just in mediumship. You don't have to be a medium. It's trusting your intuition, period. And I love yeah. those those two things that you touched on. I mean, when I teach classes, that's the, one of the first things that is shocking to people is like spirit communication is in our own voice sometimes in our head. Yes. And they're like, what? Because like you don't think maybe or or presume that that's how it would be, but, um, it very much is. So, um, that's important. And, um, I always think development, and I don't know if you found this to be true, but I really think it's just us showing ourselves to ourselves because it's exactly that you get in a circle, you get partnered with somebody and it, all the information lands and you're like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you have to be confident enough to say, I could, I'm not, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Yeah. But let's just say it. Let's just say what's coming. And which is what I was going to ask you when you said you heard your mother's voice. Did you hear it as her voice or your voice? It's funny because I think it's the memory of her voice. Yeah. yeah. But I just knew it was her. Just. Yeah. And I'm grateful that I grew up with, you know, so my mom had her own addiction issues and, you know, alcoholic journey. Um but she used to always tell me that her mom who passed away before I was born would come and sit on the end of her bed and talk to her often. So I did grow up thinking that's normal. Yeah. Maybe my mom's a little crazy. Maybe is it the addiction? Is it, but I knew, yeah. um, separating the addiction from the person, I knew that it was very real communication for her mm -hmm. and she was a very psychic mother. <laughs> like yes. she couldn't do anything without, you know, her knowing just yeah. intuitively, um, so I'm grateful too to have had that. And then I think that's why perhaps it was easy for her to communicate with me. Maybe it's that bond to that mother daughter bond. Um, cause our relationship wasn't perfect yet when she showed up, you know, I absolutely yeah. knew it was her. You understand. I, I understand that too. In fact, last night I spoke, I was speaking with one of my best friends and her sister passed a few years ago and I said, well, I'm just going to, I'm going to sleep right now. So I'm not saying I'm channeling, but I said, I'm going to just ask her to, I said, I feel her here because we've been talking about her and I know she's here. I just don't know that I'm, I'm like, I've been sick and tired, but I'm just going to meditate right now. And if anything comes and I just, I was texting with her and I was like, Stan, mm -hmm. and then I was like, Estelle, Estelle, something like with an EST. And she's like, well, our great aunt, our great grandfather was like, whatever his brother was Stan and then Esther was like the other and I was like I don't know why she, it just she just told me she's sees them there like it's not I'm like it's not I'm sure a message but I knew it because I heard it as a thought but I heard it in her it wasn't my voice it was like her voice which I don't know that well because I didn't spend a lot of time with her in this you know but I was like I can tell it's her energy I can tell that she's saying it to me and I heard it like I hear a thought and that's I think what people often misunderstand is they think we hear like a voice or do you I personally don't visually see spirit with my eyes I have um actually I never have I, I thought I had but I realized now that it was an interdimensional being which kind of threw me for a loop because I'm like it had to be a spirit right now it was actually like a blue glowing orb so I guess that's not it but do you ever see or have you seen spirit in physical form or is it more in your mind's eye it's in my mind's eye um I can't think of it. Well, the only time I think I've seen physical form and I actually think of one of my children too, has seen like dark shades or figures in their room yeah. that they knew was somebody or something. And so, and that can be really scary for a child, I think, yeah. so having to work through that. Um, but I don't know that I've seen any in outside of me. No, uh-uh. Right. Just, yeah. And I know I've, I did, I came across mediumship the same way you did, not getting a message from my a mother, but but by studying, like literally understanding first that I was a medium being told by enough people um, when I would get readings and they all said, you know, you're a medium. And I was like, no, I'm not. You know, I just thought that you had to be born that way, which to a degree, being born highly sensitive really helps. Yeah. You don't have to be, to, but it's like they say, right, that um every anyone can learn to play piano for the most part even i even saw a, a video yesterday of a man who has no uh, fingers and he can play piano i mean like to 
mm-hmm. barring not having, you know, arms, like you can learn to play piano. Um, and, but not everybody's going to be Chopin or whatever. It's like, we all have these varying levels. And, and um, so, and I think those of us that have it strongly that we're the ones that pursue it and work at it because it feels natural to us. And we're like, this feels right. This feels well, like, and I don't, and I don't know about you, but I didn't feel like I had much of a choice. <laughs> Once it yes. started unfolding, it yeah. was just like I had to, cause it's, it's scary. So like, not only do you go through, okay, am I crazy? And that mm-hmm. lingers for a while to sort through that and figure yeah. out, you know, and then it's like, you have to go develop and that takes years of practice. Right. Yep. And like, I always equate it to, and you probably heard this before, um, working that muscle to differentiate your own thoughts from spirit communication and getting better and better at. Let's talk about that because I know you teach and I'm actually starting to teach as well. That's a lot of how I describe it to people is they're like, what do you mean you went to school? And I'm like, well, you have the raw materials, which is your, your senses, Mm -hmm. but the job is, and I tell my clients this, I say, you are a medium as much as I'm a medium. The only reason you need a medium is because I'm just happened to be trained in spirit. I translate spirit language. That's it. I'm a translator. Yeah. That's what I say too. Do you go? Oh, I love that. And I say I'm an interpreter. An interpreter. I, I interpret images and I hear, so I'm hearing and seeing mostly. Yeah. Um, and so it's like charades and telephone. And I, I always just, say that. Yeah. I always start off every reading saying you and I are going to play a game of charades. You yeah. and me and spirit. It's a yeah. trifecta. We're playing a game of charades together. Yep. You, the only difference between you and me is that I'm just trained to tra- to understand the language. You yeah. can do it too, but it's harder to be objective. So I would love for you to talk about that in terms of what you learned and also what you teach and how, how do we do that? Right. Um, I think I got the most out of development circles. I don't know about you, but mm-hmm. the breakout rooms and circle and just, and watching other mediums read too, and watching mm-hmm. them through, um, that's really helpful because when I first started this journey, I remember wanting to just devour everything I could about mediumship, read every book. I wanted like the cliff notes so I could get to it quickly. And that's not really how it works. It's, yeah. really, it's a process of, and I've heard this um, probably from one of my teachers, um, it's an unfoldment. And so it takes time. And um, now looking back, I don't know if you have this experience. Some of my early, early readings were like, blow me out of the water. Phenomenal. Because I was kind of free floating and, and just, it was different. And now I'm a little more structured in the ways in which spirit comes in and the ways in which they communicate. But um, I say like whoever you're drawn to, to learn from, that's your person and you'll navigate and figure out from there. Oh, maybe I'm going to actually learn from this person or that person. And everybody reads so differently. You know, your tools of communication are going to be different than mine. So your readings are going to be different and um, everybody's kind of sorting out their own, you know, toolbox of ways of communicating with spirits. So um, just have fun with it. And, and sitting with spirit and journaling really early on was extremely helpful. Like one of the stories I like to tell is, um, again, my mom, um, I remember writing down things that I was getting from her and things that she was saying. And cause sometimes you are like, is this just my, you know, like <laughs> dream journal or like grocery list? What's, what's coming through today. And, um, she said hair things and I was like, okay, I'm losing my mind. And I think I closed the journal at that point. I was like, okay, yeah, hair things We're we're, I don't know what's going on. And then not a week later, one of my children, so I had her old couch and one of my children dropped something um, in the cushions and we couldn't, my arm was too big. And we finally got my youngest to reach down there and grab what they were missing. But first they picked out this plastic container and inside were all my mom's hair things, you know, and this is like wow, years yeah. dead. And I'm like, oh my gosh, hair things, you know? And so like, I just think that that can be a really special bonding with spirit and how you read and how you receive information. So I always recommend that as well. (laughs) I love, thank you for that. I also, because I think that's the thing. And and sometimes I'm still wrong. And I tell my clients 75% of this, like if I'm really good, I'm going to be 75% accurate. I know from those mic drop moments where it's like, oh, there's no way I could know. I mean, that is like, come on, get out of town. How could I know that? Um, In fact, the other day I read someone and uh, it was so interesting because it was like her 
she wanted to connect with her husband who had passed. But I just was like, some other guy's coming in first. His name's Bob. And she's like, that's my son-in-law's friend. And I was like, well, before anyone starts, he just has to come through because he's jumping up and down saying, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. Because I said, he's showing me he passed in a motorcycle accident. And I said, and I won't get graphic, mm -hmm. but there was a his head. Let's just, and she goes, I, yes. And I said, he just, because it was so traumatic to the body and that no one can get that image out. He keeps just saying, no, I'm alive. I'm fine. In fact, he's saying like, I just popped out and was fine. Like that's, Aww. it happened so fast. And how beautiful is that, that we receive messages like that. I'm alive and well, I'm, Yes, I'm better than ever. I mean, that's so yeah. of, uh, profound to me that it's so exactly. commonly communicated that they're alive. Yes. And that he was just like, I know you got to talk to your husband, but we've got all time all day for that. Let's mm -hmm. let me just quickly jump in here. And when things like that happen, I'm like, okay, I know that I'm connected. Now I know I'm connected, but yeah. then there might be a couple of things that I might have gotten from my own head. And sometimes those still slip in some readings, not, it does not very much. Some readings I'm like, I feel like I'm in my head. I feel like there's a lot coming from me right now. So w when you talked about sitting with spirit, and as being a great tool, I, that's what I have that. I do that too. And can you explain to people what that really means sitting in the power or sitting with spirit and how does that yeah. help us distinguish between our own thought and spirit's thought? And I don't know uh, about you, but I know in this industry, a lot of different people have a lot of different answers and yeah. suggestions about how things are, um, you know, permanently or like fixed. And I just think everything, I don't think like that. So um, I've heard people say, um, and can you repeat the question? I'm like, yeah, yeah. no, you're about good. Noise outside my office. I'm like, they have to be quiet. Yeah, no. <laughs> but anyway, I, um, repeat the specific question that sure, you Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking about what sitting in the power is and okay. how it helps us distinguish between our own there stuff and go. spirit stuff. Um, and sorry about that. We can edit that. No, part. that's fine. We're good. <laughs> um, okay. So I have heard other mediums say meditation is so important. You have to meditate or like that's a key piece of doing this work. I personally have not experienced that. I have a really hard time meditating um, because I have such an active yeah. stuff going on in my head. Um, it's five so, children. Yes, right. <laughs> right. So in the shower is where I get a lot of spirit communication, seriously. Um, yeah. But uh, when I like to sit in the power or sit actively with spirit, um, and I think it's Anthony Maraca who suggested this, um, just asking your spirit team, what do I need to know next about my development or about my life or about what I'm doing? I can't remember how he worded it specifically, but I find that really helpful. And anytime I sit with that intention to meditate, it's definitely more active and it's calling on my loved ones and looking for any kind of spirit communication um, that is helpful or serving in some way in life. So um, I don't know about you or how you kind of incorporate sitting in the power, but it's a very active, um, collaborative communication. And I don't never know who's going to pop in. And um, and I've had other moments where like um, I've called on my angels laying in bed for some healing or some um, profound things like that that take place. Because it's funny when we do this work, I think spirit gives the best advice. So we're constantly channeling advice for others. And not as often do I take that kind of advice for myself. But when I do, it is like, a, it's amazing when you like ask for assistance or ask for help or ask for healing, how spirit can show up and facilitate that in our lives. Right. So, um, that's my long answer to a short. I love, no, that's what I want. You're all your long answers. That's why we're here. I love that. I have. Yeah. So I love that so much. What you said about, uh, oh my gosh, I just, yeah, I went into that zone too. Oh, about, about asking for help, because I think even as a medium, I forget that, oh, wait a second, I can ask for help. And like clockwork, it always, the answers are always revealed. Sometimes you just have to go, oh, wait, I can ask for clarity. I don't have to ask for a specific outcome. I don't want to say, I please, I personally don't. I just kind of trust. I say, I trust your process. I understand that this is happening for a reason. But can you just help support me and show me the path forward? Show me what I meant to learn and how to best navigate it. So like, 
couple for the couple days it's funny the lunar eclipse everyone's been talking about and the mercury retrograde normally i get i take that all with a grain of salt yeah. i don't let it run my life i don't believe that everything that just because the moon's in a certain place like my life is going to go a certain way but this time it was like the conversation around we're going to be confronted with what we really need to look at what we need to let go of what we need to look at and everything kind of came to a head and i was like yeah, that's exactly what's happening here and i was like you know what I haven't cried in a long time because I was on antidepressants, anti-anxiety, and I'm now off them and feeling all the feelings. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I need to cry just to get about a million things. Like there's just things that have happened or that I haven't really addressed. I'm like, I'm fine. I'm fine. And I am, but it, like, let's just also purge it. And I did that this week where I just finally said, oh wait, hi, spirit team. Let's work on this together. And I told one of my best friends today, I said, I didn't tell you anything about what was going on because I realized this was something I needed to work on with me in spirit. It was like, I don't want people's opinions or input or I don't want to analyze it. I literally just need to feel yeah. it. And I think we forget sometimes to touch base with our mm -hmm. inner self, especially when you have five children and a career and, you know, you have to a life to to live that we sometimes forget to check in with ourselves and just say, let me communicate directly with spirit instead of asking everybody else what they think. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and I, and yeah, so tell me about your thoughts on that. Any that you yeah. might have. Uh, absolutely. I think it's just sometimes facilitating these messages and doing this work. Yeah. We forget to kind of turn it on ourselves and use it and that, you know, we go through stuff and, um, I, my birthday's coming up and every year around my birthday, I treat myself to a birthday reading because I'm like also medium. Yeah. Check in with other mediums, you know, and like, yeah, all the healing. I love that, that you do that. I, I do it too. I think some, I'm not telling anyone, listen, I'm a big advocate of therapy. I feel everyone could benefit from therapy. We all need to process our stuff. But I personally like to use, not on a regular basis. I'm not saying we replace therapy, but there's something therapeutic about sitting with a medium and healing and healing. Know? Yeah. Just sitting with someone and, and having them hold space for you. And that's why I like what I do. And you can speak, I would love to hear your thoughts on it too, that half of our job, I don't half, whatever, <laughs> there's no percentage. It's just part of our job is grief counseling, but mm -hmm. it's also just letting people be heard. And it's also letting people just talk about their loved one and have somebody listen and also we get to meet their loved one yeah. and what, an, and that brings them back to life for them. So I'd love to hear too, any, I don't know. I, I don't sometimes ask questions. I just like you to riff on things. Well, yeah, yeah. I was just going to add to that, that um, I always hope I do justice to the moment, like, yes. because it can be, because it is so healing and it can be so full of so many emotions. I mean, I know you experience this as well. Spirit will often come through. Um, saying I'm sorry or wanting mm -hmm. to talk about things um, or advice for their life now. And it can all be a lot to process. So I always just hope I do justice to that communication, right? And holding the space for the moment and um, being the best, you know, interpreter I can be um, for such profoundly moving moments and healing moments. So, you know, right? It's just such an honor to do this work and to be in that space while people are going through such a transformation. Yeah. And I know that um, I, that's one of those moments of trust where I always, and I'm, I know a lot of us do sort of pray beforehand or speak to spirit and just say, please let me be of the most service. Please yeah. let me trust that like, it's not about me. Yeah, it's, it's not about, about my here. ego. I always say I'm here to facilitate the healing in this in this, um, you know, pocket, right? <laughs> like before a session. And that's always my intention of like the first and foremost, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. not, it's like, I get excited by the mic drop moments. Cause it's exciting mm -hmm. to have that. Oh my gosh. I just oh, came yeah. up with the person's name. Like they told me their name and I heard it. It's mm -hmm. so exciting, but it's not about me. And sometimes I do. Let's talk about this. Cause this is something that comes up for me a lot. And I'd love to know your thoughts on it. Um, my ego gets involved and I don't mean it in like an er like arrogance ego, the ego yeah. in the sense that a lot of like, for example, the last few weeks, my readings have just suddenly popped. Like they're so strong 
And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm really there where I, where I've wanted to be for myself. I'm not competing with anybody, but for me, I want to be the best medium I can be. And we all do Yeah. for you, like for our clients for, but, but we want to do a good job and it's a sacred responsibility. But then I had one where I just couldn't really connect and, or, and I don't want to say just one, I've had a couple, yeah. you know, and then I start to be like, ah, oh, like maybe I'm not good at this, or maybe I shouldn't be doing this, or um, what did I do wrong? And so I'd love to talk about that when I always check myself and say, it's not about you. Spirit knows what it's doing. Yeah. If they need to, so the other, and I'll just say with that one reading I mentioned, I was sick and I almost canceled, but I was like, I'm just going to, Spirit said, no, you can do it. Yeah. If they want to come through, they, I don't care if you're sick, have a migraine, they will communicate. So ta uh, yes, please tell me everything. Wait, well, wait. I have a couple thoughts on that. I think yeah. every reading is so different for each person because that's how they need it. Cause like yes. we're showing up, we're the same person. We're, you know, I think when I was early developing, I'd be like, oh my gosh, how is the reading different? If I got eight hours of sleep versus this, mm -hmm. if I wear my special crystal <laughs> versus if I have a glass of wine the night before, like I would always like compare, like, hold myself to this standard and based on the reading compare or try to make, you know, because doing this work, right. We always want the best reading for our client, like hundred percent. And, um, I guess I'm a perfectionist a little bit about certain things in my life. And I certainly am about my readings and my work. So if a reading is just subpar or what I consider subpar, which my husband laughs at me, he's like, yeah. That's great. Um, I'll do that. I'll go back through all the things I could have done differently. And I think I've come to this place where I'm like, it's just what it is. Like mm -hmm. sometimes, and and I've done readings like for group events where I've um, even recently I had a timer and I was doing eight minute readings for people. And um, and some of the readings were like, I have your mom here. This is what she said, and this and this and this and this. And then the other readings were more like not about bringing a person through, but about leaning into the cards more. Cause I do tarot and mediumship, or it would be about, you know, their animal coming through and wanting to talk about this with that. You know, it really is what the person needs. And I think there's such, and we learn this in development, there's that triangle of communication. So there's that synthesis of energy that takes place between you, the sitter and the spirit team or the spirit, their spirit people and our spirit people. And so like that kind of has to flow. And that word trust that you were using, that has to like be there to unfold in this beautiful way for a mic drop reading, or, you know, I call them like fire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and if something's off and I don't know, I, and maybe it's not right to kind of put it on like, um, maybe potentially where the client's at in their life or what expectations they might bring to the reading. Um, but for whatever reason, sometimes it just is what it is. It's still good. It's not like I'm going to say, you know, and I've definitely gone through moments in time of having um, a bad reading where I'm like, what? And, yeah. and, I, and one thing too that I noticed is like, I had an amazing reading and a not as great or what I would consider maybe a bad reading um, up to my standards. And then an amazing fire reading after that. So I'm like, what gives? I'm yeah. coming to the table myself, all three readings in a row. How come that one? And, and I kind of, um, and I love how you brought up it's our ego because even us beating ourselves up or, you know, it's about us. It's coming from that place of like, I could have done this or I could have done that. And I really think, Sometimes it just is what it is. It's mm -hmm. whatever, for whatever reason, it was what it was. And we can't really, uh, I don't really always think it's us. Is that? Is I that, know. That? And I, <laughs> I have learned to understand that it isn't me because like I said, I almost canceled that reading because I was getting sick and I'm like, I don't feel well, something's off. And then I asked spirit, should I do it? I don't want to cancel. I feel bad, but I'm like, I don't know if I can do this. And realized it's not my state. Okay, it's not my health. I feel yeah. I feel terrible right now, but I, I my vibe isn't high. Mm -hmm. But this, she needed the reading. There's there needs to be a strong need. I find for it to be really powerful. Sometimes people come to you, and I'm like, what I've also learned is sometimes no information is. Sometimes the absence of information is information in itself. Yeah. So absolutely. instead of going, why am I not feeling anything? Why am I not hearing anything? I go do you not have very many people in spirit? And they'll go, oh yeah, just my grandma. I'm like, okay. Yeah. And was your grandma pretty quiet? Yes. Yes. That's evident. Okay. 
-hmm. that's evidence in itself. If I feel nothing, okay, this isn't a very, I'm not getting a strong vibe here. And also sometimes like, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this because I do it. I, I sometimes call my medium friends and I go, it didn't connect. Help me process. Like, what do you I think it could have been? Do you like, like, yeah. let's recap because I feel like I want to explain to this person, like why I can't do this. So like this person I read as a high school friend and I know a bit about her, but not a ton enough that I could read her and her father had passed, but two and a half months ago, mm -hmm. some people would say that's too soon. I don't, like you said, I don't think there are rules. I don't either. Sometimes a spirit can come through the, while they're halfway out their body, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, yeah. but for whatever reason, and he was a big personality. I'm like, I'm not really feeling a lot. I got a few little things, but they were so generic. It was like, he's a fundraiser. He, somebody raised money. She's like, we did a GoFundMe. And I'm like, he's thanking you for that. I'm like, there's somebody <laughs> making a blanket out of his clothes. Yes. I'm like, but those are things like everyone does when someone passes. So I wanted something like yeah. bigger and I just couldn't not like really. Not I just really, yeah. fundraiser or have a blanket made out of my mom's clothes. You know what I mean? That's so true. And I, and I, but it felt so You're big. hard on yourself too with readings or you're like, wanting yes. to be like, yeah. And then I was, there were things that she was like, no, no, no. And I'm like, am I making the, am I just not in it? What's going on? And I just said, listen, we'll try this again another day. You know, for me, it's like, if I can't connect, I'm not charging you. Um, but I will, we'll try it again and you yeah. know, whatever. But what do like, what if just, I'm curious, like, what are your thoughts on sometimes? Why do yeah. we know? I don't know. And, um, and another rule break breaking thing. Um, have you ever had mediums talk about like, Oh, um, I can't, if you give me a name, I can't bring through that person. Yeah. And I definitely don't have that rule. Like I don't have any rules. You don't have to come to a session and keep quiet the whole time and like, yeah. oh, yes or no. Um, and so I was just thinking of this because I had a reading once where I very, I think just twice in the ever have I given a refund um, or not charged. And uh, one of them, this is one of them. And in retrospect, I shouldn't have. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he wanted to talk to uh, his family and I was, it was just like pulling teeth, you know, the spirit communicate. And I'm like, why is this? Why is it like this? And then at the, at the very like 10 minutes till the end, you know, and I'm bringing through, like, I think it was his sister's boyfriend, fire to a T descriptive, like everything about this person. And I mean, it, it kind of saved the reading, right? Yeah. And, okay. Yeah. But so what, how do you explain that? Like, why couldn't I connect with his people who he's more invested in and more has these relationships with? And then, but how come I connected with his sister's boyfriend, like fire, like instantly. And, um, I think part of it is because it's like, who would we gel with naturally? You know, like as soon as we got on here and we're chatting before we started recording, we just gel and click. Like yep. that would be a really easy spirit communication. That would be really, you know, to get in that pocket. Um, maybe, you know, if, if I, I don't know, I'm just like, maybe if it was like the neighbor and I started talking to them and they were watering, it would be the same. Like, yeah. um, it's just like who we would gel with naturally in life and mm -hmm. how our energy would click in is makes a good reading. And I, so I don't think it's just for the client. I think it's for the spirit people too. Right. Um, yep. so I think that too. I've said that I've actually told clients sometimes certain spirits, like we're like, like, I posted a video about a reading I did um, on an airplane, which I had mentioned to you for this girl, Maddie. Hi, Maddie. And um, I was able to read for five hours without her giving me a single no. Everything was so specific. Names coming through, the kind of cigarette she smoked, like to the, the brand she smoked. It was like, I felt like her mother was just, she was, she was just yeah. talking to me like almost... And it was, she said, she you needed that. And you would have loved her mom probably. Like she I, said that it just sounded like same energy. Clicked. Yeah. She said, my mom was like, and I knew she, her mom and I are, have similar energy. We're both very open. We lo loving communicative. And she's, I feel her now she's with me a lot too. Now she yeah. stayed with me, her mother, her mother's one of those that just stays around. And every time I say hi to her, she comes and she's like, Hey, and she's helping me in my mediumship. Um, yeah. to show me because I was having a time of doubt where I had a few bad readings 
what we call bad readings. I know. And even though the people were happy with it and like I didn't have to refund them, I'm like, ah, it wasn't quite what I, up to my standards. And I was thinking, I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, I'm not ready to put myself out there because I don't know if I can be fire every time. And that's part of yeah. it. Like it, this kind of work is it like sometimes, and, and I, and I'll have to um, real quick, just bring up, um, did you watch Tyler Henry's Netflix documentary? Yes. And do you know how, like on the end when he's like scared shitless, like going on stage to perform and his palms are yes. sweating and he's like, that's kind of what we do every time we do this work is we put ourselves out there, we jump on the stage and hope that it all. <laughs> Have you had, I had a dream, I don't know, maybe a year ago where I got up on stage to do a reading and I don't do platform. I'm not at that. I'm starting to feel ready to do that more, but I got up on stage and was like, is there a grandma? Is there a banana? And everyone, and in the audience, everyone was going, no, boo. And they were like, get off the stage. And I was like, I, I'm flout. And then I, in the dream, I was like, I'm making this. I'm a, I'm a fraud. What am I doing? And it's, I tell people, it's like getting up on stage without a script. You have no idea what, is this going to be fire or am I going to fall flat on my face? Most of the time it's either fire or pretty good. Falling on the face happens a, a couple of times, and most people in the industry have said, it happens to me too. It happens to all of us. And you have to let go Yes, and be okay with that. And I have a mentor who I love and adore in this industry. And she's like, um, it doesn't matter what other people think about the reading. You're doing your integrity. You're doing the work. And then you have to detach. And it doesn't yes. matter what you think after that. So <laughs> I love that. That's very different than the way I naturally am. So I always think of that mm -hmm. to hold on to because it really isn't, you know, we, we do have to detach and get, you know, I think we develop a tough, thick skin doing this. Yeah, we do. Unfortunately, I think part of my not wanting to put myself out there larger scale was that fear of criticism. Whereas now everyone that comes to me is word of mouth. So I know they already have an expectation of trust. And so they already like me because the person said, oh, I love her. You're going to love her. And so they come in with a positive feeling. They're not coming in like, let's see what you can do. Let's, you know, it's a test. And so I never feel that way. And I, even when it doesn't work, they're like, it's okay. I understand. Like they get it. And they're not expecting you to suck. So it's, and there's that, been that like apprehension about, well, if I put myself out wide, what if I can't, what if I flop in public or, you know, but it is like that. That's when it comes back to this is the work I'm doing for spirit. Right. I do it because it brings me life and I love it and I care about people. And I but, think it's a really yeah. normal process we go through. I think certain yeah. times of the year I get burnt out and I question things. Um, I think when we do this work, we have to caretake on an extra level, like a lot of other professions. There's just an extra level of self care we need to prioritize because of work we're doing and so much of the energetics of it. I, I love that. What's something that when you began to study that surprised you off the top of your head about this work or that you didn't know before? Um, I guess that it can be done. Yeah, right. Same. <laughs> um, I mean, I always, that's what I think I even had a tough time with the word psychic and, in, and using it and embracing it is because growing up, I mean, how many people do you know, like love to poo-poo like Sylvia Brown or people oh, yeah. like that. And it's like unfortunate because they're missing the magic. Do you know what I mean? They're missing out on the healing. And so still, I mean, I have friends, I'm from Texas. I have a lot of people who don't believe in mediums or spirit communication and that's fine. I'm yeah. not doing this for them, you know? Absolutely. <laughs> um, but I think I was surprised by so having said that and that being my perception of like people not only did I have to get over thinking I was crazy now I have to get over other people thinking I'm crazy um yes. I think the thing I was surprised about is that people really embrace it do you know mm -hmm. what I mean like I'm sure there's people who have opinions behind closed doors but yep. I haven't really heard most I haven't heard that um, most of what I get is really warm response and understanding. And I think it's like normalized a little more than it used totally. to be. So that was a welcome surprise. Um, and then the other thing, I mean, maybe this is more specific to just mediums or psychics or people in the industry. 
but I was surprised at how competitive it it is. Tell me your thoughts on that. Yeah, you t- I would love to hear yours. I, because I'm, I guess because I keep, I don't want to say keep small. I don't mean it that way, but because I've been sort of to myself with it um, in terms of not having put myself out there on a larger scale. I don't feel it, but I've heard because you hear word. So um, definitely, well, actually, and I'll say this, and then I want to hear, I do want to hear yours is I've heard of like little interfighting or this person, this medium didn't like me putting this up and interfered and started talking crap about me and whatever. But what do you, what did you or there's learn? also the like, oh, they do it this way and that's not the way to do it. Or they, oh, yes. you know, whatever. I guess I noticed it more in my development, which was surprising. Like yeah. in those kind of groups, when you're learning from different teachers or like their circles can be really tight and the following yes. can be really specific. And um, it kind of made me back away slowly from all of that. And just mm-hmm. feel like, mm, I still feel like really, I love development circles and practicing in that way. Um, and there's so many books out there and I love passing on information knowledge that helped me in my journey. Um, but I just think it can be a little bit messy in that development community. And also like lifelong students or like it could just, you know, there's so much to all of that, that um, I think that surprised me a little bit is how, yeah, yeah, kind of catty or competitive. Some of that could be um, if you let it. And I think I just kind of backed away and um, I met a lot of wonderful people in my development journey and I have exceptional teachers that I worked with, but didn't want to deal with the messy parts. (laughs) That's something that I'd like to, I love to bring it that you bringing that up because I think because of the nature of the work spiritual people are supposed to be like supposed to be we're all light and love and the thing is I feel like I am but but I'm also very human and we're very um, sensitive so maybe that's a part of it so yes. sensitive. <laughs> we're also sensitive and if you this is something that comes up a lot is it's no like it's a known fact like if you don't haven't worked on yourself Mm-hmm. You can still technically channel spirit. It doesn't matter. Like right. I know people that are hot messes that are great mediums. Yeah. And we're all, of course, still going through our earth school. So we're all stumbling. Yeah. Or self-taught mediums. I love that too. They didn't really yeah. have any mentors or teachers and they're phenomenal. Absolutely. And the thing is in any group of people, there's, there are hu- there are humans that have been through stuff that are hurting, that are still haven't worked through their stuff. and part of what Monica, the medium talked about in her, in her class, as we started was you got to get right with yourself. Mm -hmm. I believe, don't quote me on this because I don't want to quote her, but if I recall, it was her class where it was like, let's also work on ourselves first because we can't be of service to you, which is true in life. Yeah. I can't be of service to you if I'm a hot mess and I don't have my own stuff straight. Now I can, I mean, the therapist can be a hot mess and still be a great therapist, but it's part of, part of the development is also continuing to heal ourselves yeah and work on ourselves Mm -hmm. absolutely and I heard that also from um, my teachers it's so true and I think we're always growing and developing and hopefully right that's always Mm -hmm. the intention Um, so yeah I'm right there with you on board with that I think also talking about the community because I don't want to like say anything negative either yeah Um, but I think so growing up in a small town in Texas and always kind of feeling like on the outskirts of what I considered normal, you know, for like small town Texas. Um, Although I loved my experience and um, my friendships, I just wasn't, you know, a cattle rancher and I didn't shoot guns on the weekends and just some of the things that were like uh, popular. Um, And then um, having this community. So once I kind of realized that I could do this work, I sort of went in with like rose colored glasses, like my people, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, <laughs> yay, everybody's, you know, we're all on this journey together and it's just going to be so amazing and phenomenal. And just like anywhere else, you kind of touched on it, you know, in any industry, at any workplace, at any college or whatever place of where there's a lot of people you aren't going to gel and click with everybody and it isn't like this rose colored experience so um and I had gotten warnings before going through like Mm -hmm. I don't know if you I did too too. 
And um, looking back, I wished I'd been better guarded. However, I wasn't. And that's the part that it surprised me, I think, is just the competitive nature of some of it when it's like, yeah. there's, a, and even like, I don't know if you feel that just in the community doing this work, I'm so surprised when people become competitive because, or have that any kind of air about that. Yeah. I think there's a medium for everybody. Like, yeah. Just like there's a, you know, mechanic for everybody, a dentist for everybody, like literally like the more of us, the better for doing this work. Absolutely. And people are going to be drawn to you if they're drawn to you, not if they're not like, I just don't think that there should be competition in this field, but I guess like anything. You're there's- right. And in fact, if I can't read you, I'll send you to a yeah. friend of mine that I know can. Mm-hmm. I, and I love, and I think you're right. Community has a double-edged sword. If that's the term, there's. I love it because that's why, even though you and I don't know each other, like we haven't ever hung out or whatever, but I know of you or met, met you in some, in like a development circle or something. So I was aware of you and I've seen you and I've seen you on social media, but I'm like, we follow each other. We follow each other. How did we first meet? It was in some, I know it was in a Zoom situation, a Zoom Zoom kind of a situation. So it would have been in like a practice. No. And I don't know who it was, but I know that I like saw you there and was like, I know her because I don't know if I knew you. So, and because of that, I feel affinity with you. Like, and also I see your posts and I'm like, I really like her. You know, you just, like you said, you just, you like someone, you get, you get their vibe. And I, and I like your, I appreciate your authenticity and your, the way your eloquence and just your groundedness. And there is something so beautiful about being able to just reach out like, I already know you. Like we already know each other. I get you. I don't I don't have to feel like we're strangers. Um I've been joking lately that I was like I I, I was joking for some reason like when I die I know I'm going to be that person who they're like she never met a stranger. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. I was like I don't think of people as strangers. I just never have. I just feel like there are people that I resonate with more than others. But yeah. part of the beauty is that talking with our fellow witchy people um is so beautiful because we speak the same language. We don't think it's weird that we talk to spirit. And I love too what you said about, I've been in shelter too from people's hate. Like, because I feel like if you're watching this podcast, it's because you, this is something you're interested in. If it's not, move it along. It's fine. You don't like what we're saying? What a waste of time. What a waste of time. (laughs) I know. And I recently just had someone that I know, like some person that like, I've always had a good, an, an acquaintance write something's, root like roll his eye like leave me an eye roll emoji like at something I posted which he was like yeah right or something and I'm just like why even like make a comment if you if it's not your thing just move it along and it was like it was a video where one of my guests was talking about this beautiful out of like near-death experience she had where I went into the light and he was like yeah right I'm like have you why would you even bother saying anything about it and also why would you shit on somebody's beautiful moment like it just there's no yeah. reason for and it. we all have our own truths like if I <clears> learned anything maybe it's age maybe it's being in this yeah city, we all have our own truths that we're yeah. walking through life carrying like sacred to us and like it's sacred mm-hmm. and that's why I I'm not religious but I do not I would not you know I don't put down anybody else's religion I don't I honor as long as it's not hurting anybody and it's a loving thing it's I honor your belief system and I honor atheism. I, I used to be an atheist. I I honor if you don't believe in it. I, mm-hmm. It's okay. And it, I, that's your path. And as long as you respect mine, I have a, one of my best friends is an atheist and he's like, what can I do to support you in your podcast? I'm so proud of you for doing this work. Like yes. he doesn't even believe in it, but he believes in me. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. I, I don't know if you find this to be true as well, but like, I don't think I was an atheist. I mean, yeah. I- Grew up Presbyterian, but I remember being a little girl and and making a special meeting with the pastor and and sitting down and really needing to know what happened when we die. Yeah. And he had no answers for me whatsoever. (laughs) And I kind of walked out of there like feeling gypped, like (laughs) you should know, you know? Yeah. (laughs) He's like communicates with God like he should be able to tell me what happens when we die um and I think for a lot of years I don't know what I thought or if I thought much um and then doing this work 
more than ever, blow me out of the water. Am I aware of the spirit world, aware of my sense of God and what that means to me? And um, because I trust spirit, I trust what spirit, how spirit tells us it's like on the other side and their versions of death and dying and life in the afterworld, you know, or in the afterlife afterworld. Um, so I'm just so grateful for this work too, to personally kind of give me my perception of God, <laughs> you know? Same. And I, yeah, I wasn't like, there was only, I remember in college saying you turn to dust and you die, but I was going through, I was really angsty and smoking yeah, cigarettes in my Doc Martens. Too. Yeah. yeah. But then there were, but then I watched John Edward in high school with my mom. Like that was our favorite show. And so I must've, but then at the time we were watching the show, then some article came out that was like, he goes into people's houses ahead of time. And like, and I, then I thought it was fake. And I was like, darn it, I'm disappointed. But then it came around again. So I think there is that agnosticism. Plus then when I was depressed and smoking cigarettes in my Doc Martens and, you know, being like an angsty love addict, I felt like you just die and that's it. And, and, uh, but I do, I would love to know now that you've done this work, I know listen, I know I always say, I don't know, but I believe I can't tell you it's the truth. I just know what, what my truth is and what I understand. What does happen when we die? So I think, um, one of the things that I have come to understand is that it's different for all of us. Like almost like how we perceive it will be. It is Uh huh. until it isn't <laughs> or until, I don't know, it continues to be, I'm not sure because I have had very religious people show a very kind of religious heavy version of death. You know, um, I've seen people sitting on the, the side of God, you know, and that's yeah. their experience. Um, and, and angels taking them. I've seen, um, more religious, uh, I did a phenomenal reading where they, the people were very almost like Buddhist or, um, leaning more towards that philosophy. And, um, it was that kind of experience more so. Um, so if anything, and I'll have to bring up my mom again. Yeah. I was with her in the room the day she was dying. It took a whole day really once it was the, it was clear what was happening. And then she did die. Um, and I was with her for those full 24 hours. And it was like, once she closed her eyes and they stayed closed and she was halfway in still here, it was as if her loved ones were throwing her a welcome party. Mm -hmm. And that's, she was calling out their names and just smiling so joyfully. She was. Yeah. And I mean, okay. So she was on morphine. <laughs> I know, but yeah. But, but why wasn't she yelling out like I'm at the circus yeah, you know like she was like so happy to see people and just so joyous um and she really showed me that that's that's a lot of the experience and especially spirit as well showing me their loved ones are there it's a reunion it's a coming home it's a it's that it's feeling you know and then the other thing that I've learned from spirit over the years is they'll show me God as this and I can only share my interpretation, right? Yeah. I don't think I'm the only, this is the only for sure truth, hundred percent right description, but over and over again, different spirit communicators have showed me God as a bright, white, vibrant, words can't even describe the light being color. And then they'll show their own bodies as these light beings and particles of God and oneness with God. And then I think we still are here. We've just lost touch from that. Um, and it feels not as whole or like oneness as we experience on the other side, but they'll show me them so bright and lit up and glowing with God. And, and there's parts of the Bible, right? Like, I don't remember the Bible specifically, um, but I know Jesus said, I'm a child of God, or I am part of God, or there was this description that I remember from church when I'm young and it's still the same in the way spirit describes it. We just kind of, I think religion can twist or conform or there's this fear, but you know, it's a whole different thing. Um, from my experience, from my church that I went to, um, but they didn't have it all wrong. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I think that the, re the only, um, I don't even want to say problem with religion, but just like, is that it's a little too limiting? I guess I'm going to say for me, the problem with it is that it's very literal in a lot of ways. Um, and it's like, well, why is this so? Because it's in the Bible. 
yeah. okay, well, why is it, how did it get in the Bible? Well, it was translated. Well, I'm like, I'm a channeler and I know that not every single thing that I interpret is correct. It's not, I don't tell you, like, I know that every single thing I just told you is the truth. I just know this is what I'm feeling. This is, and I know that's, a you know, someone who's Christian could come and say, that's not how it works. Like, let me explain it more. So I'm acknowledging my lack of education in this area, but I know that if it's a channeled work, how do we know that every single word is true? Because there are parts in there that just don't align with what I think, you know, what I believe God to be. Have you seen that movie, um, Monty Python's Life of Brian? It's been forever, so I don't okay, remember the details. Okay, do you remember, I always think of that time where like, um, Jesus or God, I guess it's Jesus is on the hill and the people in the back are like, huh, what did he say? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> they're like interpreting as I think he said you know and it's a yes little, and I always think of that because so much gets lost in translation just like you were saying so exactly and I don't I think that there are and in fact it's like I believe that Jesus is I believe in Jesus I just personally like the biblical interpretation doesn't feels too too literal for me um and I and I believe in God I just don't think of God as a he or she. I think it's more of a masculine energy when the way that we perceive masculinity in terms of I, I hear it described as there's a strong a strength behind it that doesn't feel sometimes it's it doesn't feel masculine or feminine sometimes it's very masculine in but that it's the light it's the energy it's not a form it's uh and so it's interesting to think about but I I, I generally that's what from interviewing near death experiencers, from what spirit tells me, from what you've experienced, we've all put together God as love, as trite as it sounds, or as like cliche rather, not trite, but like as cliche as that sounds. What is God? God is love. Mm -hmm. God is God is love. And we don't have a love like that here. We have love for our children, we have love for our pets, whatever, our families. But that love that people talk about on the other side, it's all encompassing. And it's, you wouldn't hurt another soul yeah. because that soul is part of you mm -hmm. and it's hurting you hurts me. And yet here we hurt each other all the time. What are we getting wrong? Yeah, <laughs> we're not getting, we're losing sight of the fact that you are me, I am you, we are all the same. Even if we look different or we have different belief systems or we are in different socioeconomic classes, we really are all one. And what um, I, you know, sort of, I guess I just want to say, based on what I ask my near-death experiencers is, what do you want people to know generally about all of this? Um, well, I love that you just asked that because I was thinking of something I wanted to talk about before you asked that question. Please, yeah. Just that all of their loved ones, our loved ones, um, everybody on the other side just wants us to be happy, just wants us to be content at peace with that love feeling in our heart and doing what feels good for us. Um, as long as it's, you know, not hurting anybody else. And like, I don't know why, you know, I just felt like the need to add, like, obviously, um, with integrity and aligned with our, uh, higher self and our best timeline, um, just that we're, you know, worthiness is such a thing that comes through in, in readings, um, just not to forget, what a blessing this life is, you know, and to really soak it all up and enjoy it while we're here and know that our loved ones are cheering us on from the other side and just wanting us to excel in the best ways possible in what we want. And they just want the best for us. They do. And why are we here? Why are we here in these human bodies on this planet? Good question. Question of the yeah. <laughs> century or of the life. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. I, I wonder it too. I wonder what this is all about and how come we're so disconnected from the spirit world. And, um, you know, as little ones, we're not really taught to embrace it and communicate with spirit. I mean, I always think like, that would be so amazing if, and I know I had an open-minded mother, but what if we were actually like taught in schools to communicate with spirit, to be in touch with our higher self, to, you know, um, it could be so different. So, um, I'm not sure the big disconnect or why we're having experiences here except to work out different relational patternings and different relational less I don't like to say lessons because I really think we're here to have fun and enjoy mm -hmm. it but it's turned into lessons and feeling constricted and I mean we're born into a society 
we have to work really hard to pay money just to live here. You know, like it's, it's, it really has become quite like, I don't know the big answers, but um, I trust that it's for a reason and I'm going to do my best while I'm here for, you know, for myself and everybody and the planet and God and all of that. So yeah. Well, no, I, don't really. I know I wish everyone had that. And I know it's hard because I know, as you said, it's, it's been hard for me. And I share, I share openly about this, that part of the grief that I've been going through this week and the sobbing is I realized, you know what? I'm in grief. Hello. I didn't even, sometimes you don't even know. And it was like saying, I mean, people are going through way worse things, whatever. But my grief is like, I realized I was a successful voice actor. Then I lost my voice and then I thought, when I get my voice back, I'll get back to work. The pandemic happened. Then it was like, okay, once the pandemic's over and once I get my voice back, I'll be back to work. And that hasn't happened because now the industry's changed and all the voice actors are like, our work has dried up. What are we doing now? We have to now have come to Jesus. Not Pardon the pun, but like, or whatever you want to say, not pun, but you know, the reference it's, uh, and I'm like, living here is hard. Like I'm single and I'm trying to pay my bills and it. The career I had isn't working and I love this work, but it's, you know, I wish I didn't have to charge for it, but I do. And, and all these like just life things that happen. Right. And like people and well, I don't know about you, but I never see any reference to hell or anything below or anything. No, me neither. So it's like, sometimes I'm like, this is the hardest. The hard- yes, it is. And then there's just heaven. <laughs> I agree. I was thinking it's like, obviously my issues are like just, you know, everyday issues at this moment. Like I'm fortunate that I've lost a few people. I've had some people pass, but it hasn't, like, I have a lot of people around me that have, one of my best friends lost her baby. One of, you know, and, and people that I, clients I've become close with because we've had this bond and um, they've lost their soulmate. You know, they've lost a child. And you think, God, it's so hard. Like, this is so hard. And, and yet I do, and I do think that, that, that us being here is not to suffer. Some people are like, we're here to suffer. No, we're here to adapt to the challenges and, and for us to, to learn how we find love in all of it, how we find peace in all of it, how we treat one another, even though we may be hurting, whatever, how we communicate all of it. And is, I think it's in our soul's highest it just helps us evolve and like continue to learn things. Some sort of evolution of the soul, right? Like, I don't know yes. the big scheme, but like, I, don't know either. I personally feel like we've done it over and over and over again. So yeah. I think with certain family members and I don't know, I really think it's supposed to be fun and we've just yeah. kind of like lost sight of I that. Or... I think you're right. I think it's yeah. supposed to be, we're, we're here to love. We're here to love. We're here to connect. We're here to show love. And it gets muddled up with life's difficulties. And I think that's why now more than ever, we need spiritual. I don't mean to say, I don't mean to say that like I'm pushing it on anybody, but I think that we can really benefit from a spiritual life if that resonates for, for us. And I think that's why it's so important for me to have you share your thoughts, for us to do what we're doing, to have our podcast, to talk about this stuff, because people talk about this as if it's supernatural, paranormal. There's nothing super or para about it. It's Very natural normal. and normal. Yeah, It's yeah. natural and normal. And we've lost sight of that. And I think the reason that you and I have talked about how we don't get a lot of flack about it is because people are more open to it now. And I'm hearing people say, really, that's so cool. Tell me about that. Um, because the more yeah. we can talk about it, it helps normalize it. Right. Cause like yeah. there was a time not so long ago when it was different. So. Yes. And I'll just say that, thank you for sharing your knowledge. And even the other night at dinner, I, my dad is a conservative, logical, pretty much. I don't, I thought he was an atheist, found out he's like a deist, but he used to tell me this stuff was hooey. And the other night at dinner where he just was like, I was telling him about some of my readings, my mom and he had been talking about it. And, and then he goes upstairs and he gets the family tree. He's like, well, maybe you can talk to some of these people. And I was like, did I just convince my dad that this is real as he's 82 and moving into that phase of life where death is not immediately around the corner, but he's getting closer. And I was like, did I just like offer him some magic? And so I think it does. And that's why this is called magic is real to um, shed that, to not shed light, but to share that there, this is a hard time for everyone. A lot of people are struggling, but there is still magic. 
you just have to be open to it. And thank you for sharing and tell me your, th- yeah, I'd love to hear your, your final thoughts. Um, or I was just going to say, and it's up to us to go find it because like it's worth it and we're worth it. <laughs> I love that. Thank um, you, Pearl. And and you can yeah. be reached at your readings for Pearl. Um, readings by Pearl. So by Pearl, sorry. By www.readingsbypearl.com. You can follow me on Instagram, readings.by.pearl. And also I have a Facebook page. Um, I also do a podcast with my fabulous friend, who's also a medium, um, Erica, and it's called Spirit Guided. And, um, yeah, if you just check out my website, occasionally I post different events and things that I'm doing. So, um, thanks for giving me this platform to speak on that. And thanks for having me on. This was just really fun. This is so fun too. Thank you, Pearl. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening with an open heart and mind for your likes, subscribes, leaving comments below and sharing with like-minded friends. Your support means the world. And I could not do this without you.